Hello and welcome to the Dell EMC Unity video on Unity VSA HA, which is also known as Unity VSA Dual SP. This video explains the usage, deployment, and benefits of using Unity VSA HA and the considerations when deploying the solution in your data center. Unity VSA, or again also known as Unity VSA Dual SP, is a high availability version of the Unity VSA that was introduced in the OE 4.5 update. Unity VSA Dual SP provides greater data availability in customer data center environments that require a software defined storage solution. Dual SP accomplishes redundancy benefits that are in line with that of the Unity hardware platform. With Dual SP, we can ensure no single point of failure as long as best practices are followed. Also, no potential data loss when deploying with the optional tiebreaker node. More details on this will be seen in the following slides. Note that Unity VSA Single SP is a separate solution from Unity VSA Dual SP and continues to be supported. In OE 5.1, Unity VSA Dual SP has been enhanced to include additional hardware scaling options in the form of increased virtual CPU cores, memory, and storage capacity. To complement these enhancements, software limitations have also been increased. Here is a quick comparison between Unity VSA Single SP deployments and Unity VSA HA. You'll notice that the same OVA file is used to deploy both solutions. However, since two storage processors are deployed for Unity VSA HA, the memory requirements and CPU requirements are both doubled compared to Unity VSA Single SP. Also, notice that the 4TB free Community Edition license is only available for Unity VSA Single SP solutions, which means that a paid professional license is required if you'd like to utilize the Unity VSA HA solution. In terms of system limits, a majority of the same limits are applicable to both solutions, except for the 350TB licenses, which have a higher capacity limit. For example, the max LUN size is 16TB, the max number of LUNs is 64, and the max number of file systems is 32 for both types of solutions. But the max raw capacity can scale up to 350 terabytes only on the dual SP version. Likewise, the 12 CPU and 96 gigabyte memory options are only available for dual SP. For a full list of system limits, see the Unity support matrix on the Dell Technologies product support page. To deploy Unity VSA HA, two physical ESXi servers should be made available for proper redundancy and both servers must have at least two unused VM NIC ports or must have an existing distributed vSwitch for internal network configuration. A third ESXi host would be recommended if you'd like to deploy the optional tiebreaker node. For storage requirements, Unity VSA HA deploys a number of virtual disks which should be provisioned from reliable and independent storage locations. This provides higher resiliency from potential outages. In summary, two private data stores, one for each SP, one main shared data store, and two other shared data stores are recommended in order to meet redundancy standards. This table does not include the data stores used for capacity allocation for user data. The following versions of ESXi are supported, which includes 6.5, 6.7, and 7.0. vCenter must also have an Enterprise Plus license which allows the deployment of distributed vSwitches. Unity VSA HA uses a vSwitch as an internal network which is needed for proper communication between each storage processor virtual machine. The vSwitch internal network consists of two networks, the Common Messaging Interface, also known as CMI, and the IP Heartbeat Network. The Storage Heartbeat Network is from the Heartbeat data stores mentioned previously but is inherited by the heartbeat mechanism, so it is also listed here. The heartbeat mechanism will be explained in the next slide. Lastly, the management and data networks are also deployed for storage management and data connectivity. Since the CMI network is the SP communication channel for proper function of the Unity VSA HA solution, there needs to be a fail-safe in case the CMI network happens to go offline. This is where the heartbeat networks come into play. If the CMI network fails, then the heartbeat networks will serve as a witness and force one of the SPs to go into service mode. This is because if both SPs continued running without the CMI networking piece, then both SPs would believe that they are now the primary SP and try to take over storage functions. This would be called a split brain scenario and could lead to data corruption. Therefore, the heartbeat mechanism is useful in ensuring continued data availability. If the primary heartbeat mechanism also happens to fail with the CMI, then the secondary heartbeat mechanism via the heartbeat data stores will serve the same purpose. 
In the unlikely event that the CMI network, primary heartbeat networks, and secondary storage heartbeat networks all fail, this would lead to a split brain scenario as previously mentioned. This scenario is where the tiebreaker node comes in to provide better fencing and failure scenario handling. Therefore, the tiebreaker node is an optional piece but highly recommended. For more information on deployment, please see the Unity VSA installation guide on the Dell Technologies product support page. For some considerations, note that a specific deployment tool application is required to deploy Unity VSA HA storage solutions. This application is available on the Dell Technologies product page. But note that the deployment tool is only for brand new deployments because you cannot upgrade from a Unity VSA single SP to a Unity VSA HA. Likewise, you cannot upgrade from a 2 virtual CPU to a 12 virtual CPU Unity VSA. Another consideration is that if an SP VM or associated host is corrupted and not recoverable, then a brand new deployment of a Unity VSA HA would be required to regain HA status. You would have to copy data from the existing deployment to the new deployment in that scenario. The last major consideration is that three VLAN networks are required for deployment of Unity VSA HA. These three VLANs are for internal network communication for the CMI network and primary heartbeat networks. The VLANs provide network segregation for each network to ensure network redundancy. Note that the associated switches also need to be configured to allow three VLANs to pass through the network traffic without issue. Now we'll move on to a demonstration on deploying Unity VSA HA and take a look at some of the Unisphere differences compared to what you would see in a Unity VSA single SP deployment. For this demo, we'll be using the GUI version of the Unity VSA HA deployment utility, which has already been installed on this Windows Server 2012 R2 host. Let's double click the shortcut on the desktop and start using the tool. In the initial step, the first option is for deploying Unity VSA HA in an on-premise VMware data center. The second option is for deploying Unity VSA HA into the cloud, also known as Unity Cloud Edition, which utilizes VMware Cloud with AWS. The third option is a disk management utility that is used solely to manage the virtual disks on a Unity Cloud Edition deployment. For this video, we will be covering the on-premise deployment option. On the welcome step, you'll notice right away that there are three deployment methods available. You could deploy a brand new Unity VSA dual SP solution along with the tiebreaker node, you could deploy the dual SP solution without the tiebreaker node, or you could deploy a tiebreaker node separately for an existing dual SP solution. In this case, we'll use the first default option and click Next. On the login step, you'll need to enter the associated vCenter information. This should be the vCenter that contains the two ESXi hosts where you'd like to deploy the Unity VSA VMs into. After entering the appropriate login information, click Connect. Notice that the tool will automatically move into the next step after a successful login. Here you choose the OVA template file to deploy the Unity VSA VMs from, as well as the virtual hardware configuration. The options consist of a 2-core, 12GB memory option, as well as a 12-core, 96GB memory option per SP. The 12-core, 96GB option is new in Unity OE 5.1, so we'll select that one and click Next. On the host steps, you can choose the hosts for SPA and SPB virtual machines that will be part of the Unity VSA HA solution. While choosing the same hosts is possible, it is not recommended since one ESXi host would be a single point of failure. Therefore, let's choose two different ESXi hosts and then click Next. On the next step, you need to select the data stores for system data. One for SPA private data, one for SPB private data, and one for shared system data. It is recommended that each of these virtual disks are provisioned from a different data store. The exception is that the shared system data virtual disk must come from a data store that is accessible by both ESX hosts that were selected in the previous step. Once the applicable data stores are selected, click Next. On the Heartbeat Data Store step, you need to select two additional data stores for Heartbeat Data Stores. The selected data stores are recommended to be on different sources for proper redundancy setup, but again, they must be accessible by both ESXi hosts. In this example, we only have one available data store, so we get a warning pop-up when we try to continue. Since this is for demo purposes only, we can ignore the warning and continue. On the external network step, you have the option to modify the default selected networks to use for management and data paths. For this demo, we'll leave everything here as default and click Next. 
For the internal network step, you can either create a new distributed virtual switch or choose an existing distributed switch. Again, at least three VLANs must be completely free and configured properly. In this case, we'll create a new distributed virtual switch and have the tool automatically pick its own VLANs for Heartbeat Network and CMI Network. The auto function should only be used if you know that the switches can support multiple VLANs automatically. Since it is a new virtual switch, two uplinks should be open and available per ESX host for best practice configuration. The tool has automatically chosen separate VM NICs for each port on each host. You'll notice that there is a warning symbol even though the separate VNICs were selected. This is because the tool identified that the VM NICs are connected to the same physical switch when the recommendation is to have each VM NIC connected to a different physical switch for full redundant design. Since this is a demo lab environment, we'll keep the configuration as is and click Next. In general, the deployment tool will try to have the user follow best practices as much as possible. So it is nice that we can see these warnings pop up throughout the process before we actually deploy a system. But again, since this is for demo purposes, we are acknowledging the warnings and ignoring some of the best practices. On the property step, you can enter a friendly system name and associated management IP for the deployment solution. After entering the necessary information, you can click Next. In this step, we'll browse to the tiebreaker node OVA file as well as enter the name for the tiebreaker node VM that will be deployed. Note that the tiebreaker node OVA file is a different file than the Unity VSA VM OVA file. We'll also select a host to deploy the tiebreaker node VM on, which should be a different host than the previously selected ESXi host chosen for the Unity VSA VMs. Finally, we'll choose an appropriate data store for the tiebreaker node VM and click Next. In this case, the warning is because we chose the same ESXi host as one of the SP VMs. Let's ignore this warning once more and continue. On the review step, make sure all of the configured settings are correct and then click Deploy. The deployment process itself can vary in terms of time depending on multiple factors, including host capabilities and network speeds. For demo purposes, the video has been sped up to the end of the deployment. Let's now log into Unisphere and see some differences between Unity VSA HA versus Unity VSA Single SP. First, navigating to the Settings menu, in the Management section we can see that there is a new Tiebreaker Node page. This page is where the user can select a deployed Tiebreaker Node VM to serve as a witness. In the event there are any network issues between the two SPs, the Tiebreaker Node will provide that extra layer of protection from split-brain scenarios that can cause data corruption. Since this is a new deployment, we can select our deployed tiebreaker node as seen here and configure it. Now let's navigate to the system view page. Here you'll notice that there are two SPs shown in the virtual depiction of the solution associated with network ports. This is of course different from the single SP solution which would only show one SP. Aside from these major upfront differences, the feature set and management is exactly the same from both types of deployments. This concludes the demonstration of Unity VSA HA. For more information on Unity VSA HA features and capabilities, please check out the resources listed below. Also, there are other technical resources available like online help as well as Unity Info Hub for a one-stop shop for all Unity-related documents. That's it for this video, so thank you and I hope you enjoyed watching.